G'day, you're with Ableton Certified Trainer Mike Callender for ADSR. Today we're looking at Echo, which is a new audio device in Ableton Live 10. So to get started, I'm going to bring the dry and wet value for this device down to zero so that we can just hear the dry signal of a beat that I've created for this demo. And I'll slowly dial in the dry and wet signal. So that should be a pretty familiar sound if you've used any kind of delay before. Um, but what's really interesting about this device is that there are some extra parameters at our disposal that uh, capture some of the magic of some vintage delays and um, also add a little bit of uh, texture and grit and movement throughout our delay signal. So to get started, uh, I'm going to show you the delay dials over here, these are the timings. So I've got a left and a right value. They're currently linked. So turning one of those adjusts the other one to the same value. I can unlink those here. and I can switch them between sync mode or time. So I've just uh, reconnected them so that uh, everything I do to one side is happening to the other so we can really um, hear and see what's going on. So um, sync mode works in uh, conjunction with the global tempo and means that all of the values that we can change between here are uh, beat divisions. So they'll all kind of stay in sync with the tempo of the session. We can turn that off, if we click into time mode, we go into a kind of a free mode where we can dial in specific uh, millisecond values. So, you can hear at that one millisecond value, which is super short delay, it becomes more of a kind of a, a flanger, phaser kind of effect, something more robotic. And, uh, what you may also notice below that time button or sync button, um, there's a drop down chooser which is currently inactive because it only applies in sync mode. But if I go back there, we'll see that we can switch between different types of beat divisions. So I'll play through those. So to see what's happening over here on the echo tunnel visualization, I'm going to unlink them again and I'll just make some changes over here. So I'll put uh, the right channel into notes and the left channel will uh, switch to triplets. So you'll see small subtle changes over here with the position of these lines. So the lines represent what's happening. This is the kind of the first repetition and working its way into the middle we start to see um, the repetitions get closer but sort of uh, they're fading out at this point but when I dial in some feedback it becomes more and more intense looking in the middle section and it becomes more kind of smeared and kind of uh, visually murky and, and it kind of sounds starts to sound a bit murky too so let's experiment with that a little bit. you'll hear that the feedback, because it's past 107%, is going to ring out uh, for a very, very long time. It's feeding back on itself, so it means that the output of the delay is feeding back into the input, and uh, once you get past 100%, it becomes quite angry, so you do need to be careful there. You can adjust the output level of the whole device over here on the right-hand side, should you need to, um, and you also need to be careful when you're uh, dialing in some reverb with this reverb dial over here. That's uh, the original intent is to create some sort of space 
for the effect as well, kind of like old uh, echo boxes. But um, if you dial in, if you sorry, if you choose from the drop down chooser here and choose feedback, uh, uh, is, which is the spot in the signal path where the reverb will be applied, it can get really, really nasty really quickly. So I'll, I'll demonstrate that a little bit. start to imagine what would happen if you really push that further if I push this feedback value past 100% and dial in uh, quite a bit of reverb here I can also adjust the reverb decay below the uh, drop down chooser and it's currently in feedback mode it can get really really angry however in uh, say pre or post mode it's a little bit less aggressive so you can experiment with that um, and what we can also do is uh, to tame this reverb, uh, sorry, the delay sound and, and the reverb on it, we can also use the filter. So there's some filter values down the bottom here where we can enter, uh, you know, a high pass and a low pass value and a resonance for each of those bands. But it's um, much easier to see what's going on by clicking this toggle and showing an, another visualization for that filter. So I'll dial in some of those. Uh, big verb sounds on the delay as well and then we'll filter them out and see how that goes. So you can hear it still being very angry, but you can definitely tame that with the two bands of that filter to, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, get control of some of the the low end or top end content. Also, I like to experiment with the decay on the reverb. So I've, as you can see, I've dialed in 100% on the reverb value there, but the decay is at 0%. So you just hear this kind of almost like a slap back delay kind of. Um, big sort of spacious uh, hit but it doesn't ring out for a long time so I'll just dial in a small value from that so it's definitely worth experimenting with uh, and to go back uh, a few steps I will zero out these values on the filter just by double clicking so we can go back to where we were I'll dial back I'll double click there as well on the reverb and we'll go back to the feedback and I'll just play the sound of 0% uh, feedback and we'll click this D button to have uh, the dry clipping uh, working with us so that when we um, drive the input value we're getting that overdrive on the dry signal as well and I'll turn down the output for that as well so it's quite a big difference there So it's a really uh, interesting change to the tone of this device in that uh, mode and it's a, a nice kind of angry sound that we can derive from this device. So to work our way through some of the other tabs, I'll move from echo over to modulation now. First thing I'm going to do first is uh, link those two left and rights and put them, uh, put some of these parameters back to their default values so that we can 
keep a sense of uh, you know exactly what's going on um, step by step. So now that I've done that, I'll close down this filter as well for a moment, and we'll look at the modulation tab. So at this point, I can dial in a bit of movement to the delay. So let's have a listen. So that's what we started with originally. I'm going to bring the modulation value up to 100% on the delay time. And you'll hear quite a bit of movement shifting around different delay times, even though we've got a static value up here. So you can hear a really wonky uh, pitch shifting kind of vibe coming from that. Also, if I click on this character tab just for a moment, we'll come back to here, but just to note that this re-pitch value is active. So that's what's um, shifting that pitch around when we change those delay times. So that's, that is quite similar to an old tape delay. So back to the modulation tab, um, I've got my modulation dialed in for my delay. I'm going to change the rate now. So you can change the rate up and down by clicking in this little box or you can actually click into the visualization as well. And you click and drag up or down and you can choose from six different wave types for your modulation here. So I'm going to go back to the echo tab and open up the filter visualization again one more time and I'm going to um, bring my bands a bit closer to each other so that we can hear what happens when we start modulating the filter. So I'll zero out the delay modulation, delay time modulation for a moment and I'll bring the filter modulation up to 100%. So what we're hearing here is these bands are shifting around. We can't see it as it's happening but that's what's happening with the output of the effect. Again, at the fast values, we get a really kind of robotic sound as it's shifting around. We can also, uh, after changing the rate, we can also change the phase. So we can put these perfectly in phase or 180 degrees out of phase. So we're sort of shifting between the left and the right. Nice. There's also an envelope follower over here as well that you can experiment with. So over to the character tab, there are four elements to this area. We've got ducking, gate, noise and wobble. So the ducking is uh, kind of like a sidechain effect. It's going to um, allow us to get a bit of control over the wet output based on the uh, the level of the signal of the dry input. So I'll turn it on and I'll bring the threshold down. So the threshold is very low right now and we can't hear much of the effect. I'll bring the threshold up. And you can start to hear the effect, uh, those repetitions poking through. So I'll turn off ducking and have a look at gate. Gate's operating in a similar way. It's just uh, basically uh, this threshold allows us to decide when we're going to let things uh, pass through or not. So currently everything's passing through and we'll bring the threshold up and we'll only get the loudest part of the signal. So that, those two effects, uh, those two parameters allow us to get a little bit of control over an otherwise uh, sometimes out of control signal if we're um, working with big feedback values. Uh, I'll turn the gate off. We'll have a look at noise. So noise is going to add a little bit of grit and a bit of dirt to the signal. So we hear that kind of hiss that's kind of uh, dancing around over the top of everything there. 
We can also uh, add in something to this morph value where it's going to shift between different types of noise. I really like how that sounds on the low end content of this device, uh, or sorry, the low end content of the beat that's coming through this device. It's giving it a real nice bit of bottom end character. And there's also, finally, for this section, there's also a wobble parameter where we can uh, hear uh, sort of uh, pitch shifts around between the different uh, delay values, delay time values. And there's a more value for this as well. So, um, once you find your way around the three tabs, it starts to become pretty easy to navigate. A again, uh, one of the great features of this new device in Live 10, this is kind of like Wavetable in terms of the visualization. It makes it really easy to understand what's happening and uh, when we make a change to a certain parameter, uh, there's a bit of visual feedback about what that's going to do to the sound. And it's um, once you get the hang of it, it's quite easy to navigate. So we've looked a little bit at the reverb section. There's only a little bit left to explore in this uh, introduction. So there's different uh, delay types. We're currently, and for th throughout this demo thus far, we've been working in stereo mode. We can also switch to ping pong mode, which means that the delay signal will shift between left and right rather than uh, them both coming out at once, or a mid-side mode. So. Um, the mid-side allows us to um, make a distinction between what's happening in the middle of the stereo image compared to what's happening on the sides. So I'll look at ping pong first. As soon as I click ping pong, you'll see that the lines on the echo tunnel change. They kind of uh, syncopate. They kind of um, uh, sort of sit between each other. There's the first original um, signal and then we get one channel, then the other channel, then one channel, then the other channel, and that kind of thing. So that sounds like this. So I just turned off the filter halfway through that demonstration just to give you a really good open um, sense of what's happening with that ping pong delay. And I'm now going to go into mid-side mode and you'll see that when we disconnect the mid and the side, they used to be called left and right, they're now called mid and side. They're unlinked now and we've got control over how many repetitions are happening on the sides and how many are happening in the middle. When you combine that uh, change to the parameters along with some offsets for the left and right channels or the mid and side uh, delays and then uh, dial in something for our stereo parameter. So just to explain how that works, all the way over to the left, uh, it's mono signal for the delay. Halfway in between or at 100% is what we've been listening to. And this is a kind of a wide mode all the way out to 200%. So, you can hear it being quite uh, spacious, quite uh, angry at times, but uh, at all times it's got a lot of character and there's a lot of flexibility with this device. So um, I encourage you to have a play with it and I hope you enjoy it as much as I am. Thanks.